And as of now, you know, most of these have been uh, utility tokens, which is fantastic, and it's driven a ton of innovation in the space. However, you know, these utility tokens do have somewhat limited ability. So last summer, um, my uh, co-founders and I had an idea, and that was basically to tokenize a VC fund. And we wanted to figure out how we could do that as an ICO. And you might be surprised to hear this, it was actually rather difficult. So what we ended up doing uh, was actually starting a company, and the company is Securitize, and we specialize in doing security token ICOs. These are entirely new, uh, new space. You know, it really allows for a large variety of models um, you know, that are different than necessarily a pure utility token. Utility tokens are fantastic. You have, you know, customers who are supposed to be purchasing these things and using them. Whereas the security token, as we heard from the panel earlier, you really get the rights to an underlying asset. If you have investors, and they go through all sorts of KYC, AML, and in the U.S. accreditation. And I'll say the U.S.'s rules are different than other countries, uh, and so it's important to understand all the different places where we operate and figure out what the rules are. But nonetheless, this is a trillion-dollar market opportunity. It's humongous. So... One of the major challenges, though, of this uh, space around security tokens is really uh, liquidity, right? So no liquidity means it's not the most interesting thing in the space. So you know, what's fantastic now, and actually earlier today we made an announcement of uh, listing the Spice VC token on Open Finance. So it's the first to security token that's now listed on an exchange or a marketplace, I should say is the proper word. And so um, you can see there's a whole bevy of different companies. Everybody knows T0, Open Finance is one I'm sure you all get acquainted with quickly, uh, GBX, uh, Bank to the Future, Templum, VRBX, and Bancor. These are all different ways to provide this continuum of liquidity, which we're going to see evolve in the security token space just as it evolved in the utility uh, market. So what's really interesting, though, is if you look at this, and they mentioned it earlier with the Reg A+, Plus, Tier 2, and the types of things, if you look at it, you know, STOs, we believe, could replace IPOs in the future. Right now, there's this obvious clear preference uh, to go after a private funding. They mentioned it earlier. It's about $1.9 trillion is being pumped into uh, private offerings. And there's 16 times larger market than the IPO market. Most people think I'm the biggest. But reality is, if you're going to do an IPO, you probably want to be one of these billion-dollar companies. You're not going to start as a smaller firm. And then what's fantastic about an STO is just a heck of a lot cheaper, right? So you can do this much more quickly, it's much faster, and your rules, you get to write them for the most part as long as you abide by the, the laws that exist today and stay within the guidelines and the guardrails that we have right now. So we are really excited about this opportunity. We think it'll be massive. Um, so that's all great, right? And so why are these things ubiquitous, right? So I think there's a lot of different pieces here that have to come together to make this ubiquitous. You really have all of your investor validation components, the token creation, the issuance platform, managing the life cycle of it. So the life cycle is most people aren't thinking about. This is a security. You need to know who your investors are. If you're going to pay a dividend, you need to know who they are. You can't just pay them. And so there's a whole bunch of problems that are coming up there. And the next phase when you start trading is around compliant liquidity, making sure that that liquidity is done in compliant ways. Yet a whole other phase of the life cycle that has to be managed. So you have to think about doing your offering in a fundamentally different way. You're much more of a public company in this frame where you manage liquidity as opposed to just doing an ICO and raising capital. So, you know, the way I look at it when I speak to customers is we kind of look at it as it's a sprint and then a marathon, right? So you start with this launch. Everyone's panicked. There's 100,000 things to do. Tons of documents need to be put together. It's complicated, et cetera. But then when it comes to an STO, you actually have to think about how you're going to communicate with your investors. What's your the way that you're going to engage with them? You know, how are you going to pay dividends? And when are you going to pay dividends, if that's something? Can you pay dividends to people that hold your tokens? Other questions around, like, liquid management. So today, you go out, you try to sell your tokens in the first offering. Well, in the future, you manage liquidity. So you could issue 100 million tokens, but only put 10 million tokens out, hold a dark pool, let some more out later when it starts trading. This is a security, so you can actually manage it that way. And I feel a lot of companies really want this. They want this tool. They want to be able to engage with their investors. And so the STO enables that scenario. So shameless plug for us, right? We do have an end-to-end -end platform to enable you to do this. There are a ton of components pulled together from a whole host of different companies in the space. 
Um, we are you know, very focused on just being a primary issuance platform and working with exchanges. We are not an exchange. We don't plan on being one. We don't do advisory. We're not lawyers. We don't do any of those things. You should work with advisors. You should work with lawyers. Come to us when you have a product that you're ready to take and launch with, and then we're able to actually do your security token offering for you. So I figured I'd give a couple examples of different projects we've worked on just to make it a little bit more real. Um, so we started with the tokenized VC fund, and the way I look at it is you kind of start in these three phases. The first phase is getting the money into the market, so then it can be deployed with startups. So Spice VC is a great example of that. Um, these are tokenized VC funds, fully tokenized, uh, end to end. Um, all the exits are paid directly to the shareholders through uh, ETH, and so it's all you know on the blockchain and managed through that. And it's basically taking the the model that blockchain capital created and evolving it to be fully tokenized. So. We have Spice, there's another offering, NYCQ, that's in market as well as another example of that. Um, another example is you can do really innovative things here, right? So this project, uh, 22X Fund, takes batch 22 of uh, five startups, which is basically 30 companies. They did an equity pool. And you, the single token represents equity in 30 different companies. And I've seen like the Silicon Valley coin recently that got announced. This is the same thing. This is one of uh, Silicon Valley's top operators. You're getting uh, 30 companies in one token. All the exits are paid directly to the shareholders. Really fantastic new way for startups to fund. And then another example would be uh, VRBX. So they're here at the conference. Um, this is a different model where it's preferred equity plus a dividend. So you basically, what they are is a crypto trading platform and an STO exchange. I mentioned earlier there's lots of exchanges coming online. So they get preferred equity ownership with a quarterly dividend of 15%. And... Uh, the dividends paid on both the cryptocurrency and the security token exchanges. All the dividends are paid directly to the shareholders. So these are new models for you to consider as you take your uh, businesses to market and just different ways of thinking about what you can do in the security token space and actually just the whole overall token space. <laughs>